Brothers and sisters of Ghana, to all the media, my name is Captain Isaac of Israel United in Christ. Uh, right here we have Deacon Malachi, uh, Deacon Abiel Shabian Soon. We have Captain Hananiah, brothers raise your hands. Captain Arie, Captain Joel, Captain Gedaliah, Officer Jeraham. Over here we have Captain Ashanel. Okay, we have Officer Hosiah, is he here? Okay, and the rest of the brothers live here in Ghana. We do have a location here in Ghana. Our main objective is to go throughout the world and teach the diaspora of our people. What is diaspora? The scattered Israelites. Uh, to many of you who are familiar with the Bible, you know that the Bible is about the nation of Israel, and we, we were the ones that were scattered in slavery and colonization because we broke God's laws. That is the main objective of Israel United in Christ, which was spearheaded by this man right here. If you take a look up here, his name is Bishop Nathaniel. Okay, this is Bishop Nathaniel. He's the founder of Israel United in Christ. I want to open up with 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. And like I said earlier, please, brothers and sisters, take notes, because you will have questions. You should have questions at the end of this. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. So we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. As we go on, we're going to find out who is the many that corrupt the word of God. Because the word of God has been corrupted. That's what you're going to find out today. Okay? Contrary to popular belief, the word of God has been corrupted. Read on. But as of sincerity. But as of sincerity, meaning but as of truth. Go ahead. But as of God. Mm -hmm. In the sight of God speak we in Christ. Speak we in Christ. Let's go to the words of Christ. Matthew 24 and verse 4. Matthew 24 and verse 4. What did Jesus Christ tell the Israelites? What did he tell them? What did he warn them about? Because remember, we just read from Paul that the word of God was corrupted. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name. So Christ said, take heed that no man deceive you. Have we been deceived, brothers and sisters in Ghana? Yes. Some of you are nodding your head right now. And the answer is yes. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Who is the many that came in Jesus Christ's name, calling themselves Christ? Christ means anointed one. Christians mean anointed ones. Who is the many that came in the name of Jesus Christ calling themselves Christians? Who? So-called white people. So-called white people. They are the ones that taught you the gospel. They are the ones that corrupted the word of God. They are the ones that gave you the white image of Jesus Christ that you see all over Africa, all over Ghana, wherever we go. Not only here on the continent, but also in the Americas, the Caribbean islands in Europe. Wherever the children of Israel are scattered in the diaspora, there you have a white image of Jesus Christ being forced on our people. Before it was beaten into our backs to worship it, now we worship it with a willing spirit. Read that again. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors. So Christ says, Many shall come in my name and shall deceive men. So let's go into the Bible and see if we have been deceived. Because a lot of you don't realize that the Bible is the black man's book. What black man in particular? The Israelites. Let's go to the first man, Adam. Genesis 2 and verse 7. There's color all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. But because we have been deceived deceived mainly by the so-called white man, the European systems, European theology, European institutions, we have been thoroughly deceived to where now when we think of the Bible, we think it's a white man's book. When we look at the land of Israel, we think that those people that inhabit the land are the biblical descendants of those Israelites when they are not. I'm looking at the Israelites right here. Genesis 2 verse 7, first man Adam. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. 
the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The Bible says God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground. Now, I want to make this somewhat interactive. Somewhat interactive. Young man right here on the phone. What color is the dust of the ground? Brown. Very good. Brown. That's common knowledge. As you dig deeper into the earth, the browner it gets. The first man, Adam, who was created on the continent of Africa, by the way, God said he was brown. He was made from the dust of the ground. Remember what God said in the beginning, Genesis 1, verse 26. What did he say? We're going to read it. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Mm -hmm. God said, let us make man in our image. God said, let us make man in our image. The first man, Adam, was made after the image of God. This is something that has not been taught on the earth. All throughout Africa, all throughout America, the Caribbean island, Europe, guess what? We see white images of Jesus Christ. We see white images of God, white images of the angels, white images of the Israelites, of the Jews. But God said the first man, Adam, was made from the dust of the ground. So Adam looked like God. So what did his son look like? Revelation chapter 1, and I would like to start at verse 1. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Yes, sir. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation means to reveal, which means to show forth. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Read. Which God gave unto him mm -hmm. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Read. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Read on. Who bear record. Who of, bear what? Who bear record uh -huh. of the word of God uh -huh. and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read. And of all things that he saw. And all things that he saw. What do you use to see? You use your eyeballs. And whatever your eyes see, you take pen to paper and you write it down. And that's what John did. That's what John did. Go to verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Read. And being turned. I saw seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden candlesticks. And, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, mm -hmm. one like unto the Son of Man. Get me that image, Joel. One like unto the Son of Man. Why did John use this grammar? Why did he say one like unto the Son of Man? Because John the Revelator was that same John the Apostle, John the Disciple. He walked with Jesus Christ. He seen Jesus Christ. He said, one like unto the Son of Man, read. One like unto the Son of Man, mm -hmm. clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had a garment all the way down to his foot. Come on. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. He had a gold belt on. Come on. His head. And his, his head. head. Uh-huh. And his hairs. And the hairs on his face. Come on. Were white like wool. Now I want to do a comparison, brothers and sisters. This is why we have this illustration. You can take your phones out, you can take the picture as well, okay? I want to do a comparison here. So John the Revelator sees Christ on the island of Patmos, which was a prison, and he says the hair on Christ's head, right here, and the hair on his face was white like wool. What is the word that we want to extract out of that? Wool, that's the operative word, wool, wool. What is wool? Wool is the hair of Negroes, the texture. Wool is the hair of Negroes. My brother right here has woolly hair. My brother right there has woolly hair. My sister right there has woolly hair. So where did this picture come from? So this is wool, this is wool. Where did this come from? Long, blonde hair. That is not biblical. Jesus Christ never looked like that. But we have been deceived, like Christ said in Matthew chapter 24. Now what does the Bible say about blonde hair? Leviticus 13, please. So I want you to keep this image here. Image is important. The white man knows that image is important. It's our people who don't realize image is important. Our people will say real ignorant things like, color doesn't matter, or Jesus Christ. Nobody sees Jesus Christ. He had no color. He was translucent. He was invisible. 
Imagine 30 years from now, the white man returned back here to this country and they told you Kwame Nkrumah was a white man or Kwame Nkrumah was a Chinese man. Most of you will start a revolution just off that ideology. So how about our Lord and Savior, the greatest black man who walked the planet Earth? You should be offended. You should be offended. Leviticus 13, verse 30. Come on. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall see the plague. Then the priest shall see the plague. A plague is a sickness. Come on. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow, thin hair. Yellow, thin hair. All the pictures throughout Ghana of Yesu is a white man with yellow thin hair. What does the Bible say about yellow thin hair? Read. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. You're unclean in the eyes of God with yellow thin hair. But this is the image that they gave us in slavery and colonization. And they continue to push this imagery all throughout the continent of Africa today. Go back to Revelation chapter one, verse 14, please. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter one, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the hair on his head and face was white like wool. Not only was it woolly in texture, but it was all white. It was all white as snow. This man has no white hair. Go ahead. It's white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. The whites of Jesus Christ's eyes was as a flame of fire. Why was it as a flame of fire? Where are my Christians in here? Where are my church goes? Amongst this group right here. How many of you go to church? Okay, you young man. Why does it say that Christ's eyes were as a flame of fire? What's your name? Ivan. Young man, what's your name? Ivan. Ivan? Ivan. 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 Yes. Why does it say Christ's eyes was as a flame of fire? Okay, we'll show you. These things are not taught in church. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. Let's get the prophecy. What did Moses say about the coming Messiah? Come on. Genesis chapter 49 verse 12. Mm -hmm. His eyes shall be red with wine. So Moses prophesied that the Messiah's eyes will be red with wine. Jesus Christ's first miracle, he turned water into wine. Water into wine. Go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. And his feet. And his what? His feet. And his feet. Quick question. Does your feet look like the rest of your body? If your feet is brown, that means your hands are brown. Or your face is brown, unless you have a sickness. So John the Revelator sees his feet. What did he say? And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brothers in the media. What color is brass? Brass is brown. Ivan seems to be the only one with the answers, but it's okay. Good job, Ivan. Brass is brown. Look, this is brass. It's a derivative of brown. Read. As if they burn. As if they burn. Now you take that brass, you burn it. What color does it become? Black. Dark brown. Dark brown. So what does this say about our Lord and Savior? Yesu says that Jesus Christ was a black man. And guess what? He looked just like God. He looked just like his father, the, the heavenly host, heavenly God in heaven. Daniel chapter seven. We're gonna show you that. Everything we can prove out of the Bible, like Paul said, we speak in sincerity and truth. Okay, let's get that. Yes sir, the book of Daniel chapter seven and verse nine. And please write these scriptures down. Don't take our word for it. You can go home and do your own research. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. that the ancient of days did sit. So Daniel had a dream. He had a vision. And he saw all the kingdoms, all the ruling powers of the earth cast down. That's what's going to happen when Christ makes his second return. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. He had a long garment on because he had a body, Read. And the hair of his head. And the hair on God's head. Like the pure wool. Wow. That is something I never learned in school. I'm pretty sure you guys never learned that growing up here in school, following the British curriculum that you probably followed until this very day. It says that God's hair was white like wool. Jesus Christ's hair was white like wool. So are his people that I'm looking at today. 
Okay, go back to Revelation chapter 1. Did we finish that? Yes, sir. We, we finished that up. Let's finish. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. And his feet like unto fine brass. Jesus Christ's feet was like fine brass, dark brown. As if they burned in a furnace. Black. Come on. And his voice is the sound of many waters. Because Christ spoke loud. So how about his people? Christ came from the tribe of Judah. All right, many of you are aware of that. Let's get that in Hebrews. Okay, then we want Jeremiah 14. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 14. Yes, sir. For it is evident mm -hmm. that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. Let's find out how his brothers and sisters look. Jeremiah 14, verse 2, please. Now notice, all throughout the Bible, it speaks about color. All throughout the Bible. So we have been deceived because we allowed the colonizers to teach us the Bible. We have a big misconception all throughout the planet Earth, wherever we've been scattered. The people that, well, these people would never what? Teach you right. Because they never treated you right to begin with. Why would they tell you that you are the greatest people to ever walk the planet Earth? Why would they do that? No, they want to keep you in spiritual and mental bondage. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah mourneth. Judah mourneth. And the gates there are languished. And our leadership is in language. I mean, our leadership, we have poor leadership. Go ahead. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. Why does it say unto the ground? Because we look just like the dirt of the earth. Like our forefather Adam was made from the ground, the dirt of the ground, dark brown. Get me Lamentations, chapter 4. And verse 8. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. Yes, sir. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, and verse 8. Their visage is blacker than a coal. Read it again. Their visage is blacker than a coal. Their visage, their faces, the Israelites, is blacker than a coal. What color is this? What color is a coal? What color is this? Huh? Black. All throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. But what happens to our people? We let the so-called white man deceive us. And he's still deceiving us until this very day. Read that passage again. Yes, sir. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. Their visage is blacker than a coal. Their faces is blacker than a coal. So who are the white people in Israel today calling themselves Jewish? Those are imposters. And we're going to show you, those are imposters. The biblical Israelites are right here. Okay, those are not the real Jews in the land today. And that's something that we have to learn before Christ makes his second return. The Bible says their visage is blacker than a coal. So now we're going to show you some pictures. And there's still many other color scriptures. We're going to get into that. Okay, we're going to show you some pictures that were scattered. When we were scattered, we painted in the medieval ages, also known as the dark ages, when we ruled Europe. Let me say that again. When we ruled Europe, we painted our pictures in the catacombs, in the castles, and in the caves all throughout Europe. All throughout the synagogues and churches and monasteries. Okay, let's start with this one. This is called the Varane, the Varane Church, which is in modern-day Romania. Okay, this is the Varane Church. Let's see what's inside of it. Oh, what do we have here? Angel, painted black, brown. This is the resurrection of our brothers and sisters who died in Christ at the last trump, being raised up. Let's get that in Ezekiel, because all throughout the earth, what do we see? White image of little white babies, butt naked, with small pecker woods and little angels, right? That's not in the Bible. There's no such thing as white angels. No such thing as white angels. I can prove it. Ezekiel, the first chapter. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. as, for the living, as for the likeness of the living creatures. As for the likeness of the living creatures. The living creatures are the angels. Read. Their appearance was, Their like, appearance, uh -huh. was like burning coals. Of Their life. appearance was like burning coals. Burning coals. Burning coals. Coals. Black. Why are we deceived? Why have we been deceived? We've been looking at this man like he's a god when he's no god. Look at this, Ivan. See this? Don't stare into space, Ivan. I need you to focus. I know, I know this news. I know this, this is 
new news for our brothers and sisters, but I need everybody to focus. So the Bible even says the angels are black. Next slide. These are, these are our forefathers, many of the patriarchs. Next slide. Next slide. Forefathers again. This is King David right here. Next slide. Oh, who's this? Who are these red people with chains on them? Who are these red people right here with chains on them? We're going to find out in a minute, and it's going to surprise you what the Bible says. Next slide. Next slide. More patriarchs right here. We have Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and so forth. Next slide. Adam and Eve. We read that earlier. Genesis 2, verse 7. Adam and Eve was made from the dust of the ground. Next slide. Okay, here we have King David and Moses. First, let's get Moses. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6. Where was Moses made second to Pharaoh? What country? What country was Moses in when he was made second to Pharaoh? Egypt. Where is Egypt? Is Egypt in Europe? Where is Egypt? Africa. Guess what? The biblical Egyptians were black people. They were not the people you see there today. Those are Arab colonizers mixed with Greek colonizers, known as the Ottoman Turks. A mixture. Those are the people ruling Egypt today. So remember, in order for Moses to pass as an Egyptian, he had to be black. Now look what happened to Moses. Exodus 4. Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. The Lord said furthermore unto him, mm -hmm. Put now thy hand into thy bosom. So God told Moses, this is the miracle, because Moses was a little timid. So God had to show Moses, I'm with you, Moses. Don't be scared, Moses. He said, put your hand into your bosom. Like this. Let me go this way. Put your hand into your bosom. Go ahead. Put now thy hand into thy bosom. Mm -hmm. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, and behold, when he took it out, uh -huh. behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was leprous as snow. What color is snow? White. So what was the miracle? He turned Moses' black hand into a white hand to show him that the God of Israel is with him. Moses is black, as depicted right here by our forefathers in the Dark Ages. Get me Song of Solomon, chapter 1, and verse 1, and then 5. King David, also a black man. King David, also a black man. He had a son by the name of King Solomon. You guys heard of King Solomon, right? King Solomon left his depiction in the Bible for us. Let's read it. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. King Solomon wrote the Song of Songs. It wasn't from a lady who was in love with him. That is a European lie. European lies. Verse 5. Verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. I am what? I am black. Read that one more time. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. I am black. Uh huh. But comely. King Solomon says, I am black, but comely. Comely means handsome. King Solomon says, I am black and handsome. Give me Job chapter 30, verse 30. Job 30, verse 30. Like I said earlier, the Bible is filled with cover scriptures. The Bible is our constitution, brothers and sisters. That's what we need you, brothers and sisters, to understand. That's what we need all the descendants here in Ghana of the biblical Israelites to understand. You children of the trade slave of the slave trade part, the slave trade and colonization. You are the Israelites. Go ahead. Job chapter 30, verse 30. Mm -hmm. My skin is black upon me. Job said, my skin is black upon me. Not emotions. My skin, skin is flesh. My skin is black upon me. So why have we been deceived? Give me Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. Blessed is he that readeth. Yes, sir. Why have we been deceived, my Ghanaian brothers and sisters? Because we don't read. Everything the colonizers tell us, we take it for face value and we take it as truth when it's all lies. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. Come on. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Now let me get a particular prophecy for you guys. Luke chapter 21. So what happened to these 
black people that were in the land of Israel on the continent of Africa. Because Israel is part of the continent of Africa. Israel is part of the continent of Africa. And that's something that our people don't know. Why? Because the white man, when he refers to Israel, he calls it the Middle East. The Middle East is a new term. The Middle East is a new term. How do you think our forefathers walked from Israel into Egypt? If Egypt is in Northeast Africa, that means Israel is in Northeast Africa. So let's talk about a particular prophecy that happened to the dark-skinned black Israelites. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. Mm -hmm. When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, mm -hmm. then know that the desolation thereof is not. So who's this speaking? Our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. He's telling the Israelites, he's warning them. When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the destruction is near. What destruction? The Roman destruction by the hand of white people. Romans was coming to Jerusalem to besiege it. Go ahead. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Now what mountains was Christ telling the Israelites, his brothers and sisters, to run to? What mountains do you think he's referring to? Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Mm -hmm. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, mm -hmm. saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. <laughs> Egypt was the mountains that Christ was referring to. Go back to Luke 21. Luke chapter 21 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, mm -hmm. and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Read. And let not them that are in the countries enter there too. So Christ is telling us, let them that are in, in the country leave those outside of Jerusalem, don't come back. Because destruction was coming. Destruction was coming to Jerusalem. Read. For these be the days of vengeance. You hear what Christ said? These be the days of vengeance. Go ahead. That all things which are written. That all things which are written. May be fulfilled. Written in the Old Testament must come to pass. Must come to pass. I want you guys to hold that thought. Next slide. Oh, black angels again. Black angels. Come on. More angels. Oh, Samson fighting the lion. Go ahead. This is Abraham raises his sword to slay his son, then the angel stops him. More black people. Come on. Oh, look at this. More black people. This is the Apostle Paul. We can't forget about that. Give me that in Acts. About Paul. What was Paul mistaken for? These are all black people we're reading about. Your eyes surely can't be deceiving you. These are black people. So what did Paul get mistaken as in the Bible? Come on. Acts chapter 21, verse 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Or not thou, that Egyptian? Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian, a black man. Read. Which before these days made us an uproar mm -hmm. and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. Read. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. Which is a what? Am a Jew. Paul said, I am a Jew. So the Jews are black. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Drop that. Get me the sound of it. Sound of the compact Bible. So what happened when we ran out of... Israel, we migrated into Africa. We're going to read that from scholars. This is a book called From Babylon to Tech Book 2. You can still order it on Amazon by Rudolf R. Windsor. Let's take a look at the middle paragraph on page 84. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. Where did we just read about that? Luke chapter 21. This is something that the scholars know, but they won't teach you. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over a million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. 
So the Israelites are black, and they migrated deeper south into Africa, later establishing kingdoms like the Mali Empire, the Sangha Empire, the Ghana Empire, also known as the Ashanti Empire, which was very vast, very vast, took up the whole Sahel region, took up that whole region. The Ashanti Empire was extremely vast. It composed more than just here of Ghana. It stretched to Togo and parts of Guinea. The, the Ghanaian Empire was extremely vast. Do the research. Go to the next page from Babylon to Temple 2. I want to concentrate on, where's the verse? Uh, right here. Right here. Okay? Now we're on page 90. Last paragraph. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. When it says African tribes, it's talking about the ancient, ancient, Hamitic, biblical descendants of Ham. Today they're known as the, as the pure-blooded Nihilotes. The reason I say pure-blooded Nihilotes is because the Nihilotic people mixed with, under, with other Bantu Shemitic tribes. So the pure-blooded Nihilotes are the, the descendants of Ham. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the auto, not autonomous population. In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrial and skillful people. In the Jewish Ghanaian states, where we are today, Ghana, in the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, judges, architects, engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, jewelers, sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculturists, and etc. That all translates to a nation of kings and priests. That's what it translates to. That's who you are. You are the descendants of those Israelites. And that's recorded in the Bible. Get me that in Romans, I believe it's Romans 3. What advantage? Yes, sir. Romans chapter 3. Excuse me. Now, all of this that we just read, we're going to show it to you in one paragraph in the Bible. Notice said, notice right here, it said, the Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. Come on. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. What advantage then have the Jew? What advantage does have the Jew? The descendants right here in Ghana. Go ahead. What profit is there of circumcision? The law of circumcision was given to us. That's why mainly in particular the Ashanti tribe, and I know there's a whole bunch of different tribes, but the Ashanti tribe, they practice circumcision. Go ahead. Much every way. Much every way. Chiefly. Mainly. Come on. Because that unto them uh -huh. were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God was given to the Israelites only. It was not given to the whole world. It was not given to the white man, the Arab man, the Chinese man, the Japanese man. It was only given to the Israelites. Hold up a Bible. Somebody hold up a Bible. That book right there, right there, with a red dot, that is our constitution. That is the constitution of the Israelites. Okay, let's move on. So get me Psalms 106. So we migrated deeper into Africa. We had our records with us. What happened in the process of time after many centuries? Psalms 106, I believe around verse 30. Yes, they were mingled. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 106 and verse 34. Mm -hmm. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, uh -huh. but were mingled. But they were what? Mingled. We mingled with the Hermetic tribes when we migrated deeper south into Africa. Go ahead. But were mingled among the heathen uh -huh. and learned their works. We learned their works. Spiritualism. Hermetic African spiritualism. Idolatry. We learned their works. That's what happened right here on the continent. Remember, we had our own records. We had our written laws and oral laws. 
But when we assimilated and integrated with the indigenous Hermetic tribes of Africa, we learned their works. Read. And served their idols. And we served their idols. Read. Which were a snare unto them. Which was a trap unto us. The same way Christianity is a trap unto us now. Why? Because we celebrate Christmas. Many of you are going to celebrate Christmas next month. And that's not biblical. So there's many things that we do now because we have been assimilated and integrated with the other nations. Read. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Witchcraft. Go ahead. And shed innocent blood. Mm -hmm. Even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. Unto the idols of Canaan. How many of you know, Ivan, you might know, who is Canaan? Who was his father? Canaan's father was Ham. Ham. Get me that. Yes, very good. But you can look right here, I We got it for you right here. So what is the definition of Ham out of the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary? These are the nations right here that we assimilated with and we started to follow their customs when we fled out of Jerusalem and migrated deeper south into Africa. It says Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. But Ham himself was black, Japheth was black, and Shem was black. So what does it mean he became the progenitor of the dark races? It's going to explain it. Not the Negroes, but the Negroes are black. But the scholars know that we don't come from him. We come from Shem. It says not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. These are the people we assimilated with. We read that in Psalms 106. These are the people we assimilated with and we learned their works, which was against God, which caused us to sin. And because of that, God sent us into slavery. Get me Joel, the third chapter. Get me the Americana. Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia Americana. God sent us into slavery. Let's read the scripture first, then we're going to read this. Reason being, the reason I want to read the Bible first, because the Bible is the main authority. The books that we have here, they just back up the Bible. But the Bible is the primary source. Joel, the third chapter. Joel, chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yay. Excuse me, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. They have cast lots for my people. What does it mean to cast lots? Slavery. Auctioning blocks. They bid. Nigga, 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 nigga sold. They buy you for money. They cast lots. Go ahead. And have given a boy for an harlot. They made the men breeders. They had the men sleep with the women, have sex with all the women to bring what? Bigger and stronger black slaves. Go ahead and sold a girl for wine. And the girls were sold for wine. They were sold for sex. Come on. That they might drink. Uh-huh. Yay. Yeah. What have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Tyree and Zidon were children of Canaan. They were ancient Hamites. God is saying, what do you have to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Go ahead. And all the coasts of Palestine. The Palestine or the Arabs. And I'm saying this for a reason. Pay attention. Because we're going to read about something called the Trans-Saharan Slave Trade, which started before the Transatlantic Slave Trade. The Arabs had us in slavery first, before Ibrumi, before the white man. Okay? Read. Will you render me a recompense? Will you pay me back because I didn't choose you as my chosen people? Go ahead. And if you recompense me, mm -hmm. swiftly and speedily will I return your, your recompense upon your own head. Swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. Read. Because you have taken my silver and my gold uh -huh. and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Come on. The children also of Judah uh -huh. and the children of Jerusalem. Who are the Ghanaians? Who is the Ashanti? The Etwin? All these different tribes that you have here that stem out of the Akan people. You are the Israelites. You are the Israelites. Judah! God calls you Judah. The tribe of Judah. That's one of the kingdoms that you set up here. We're going to prove that in a minute. Go ahead. The children also of Judah uh -huh. and the children of Jerusalem mm -hmm. have ye sold unto the Grecians. So the Hamed tribes and the Arabs sold us to the white men. But first they were selling us to each other. Look at this. This is from the Americana, the Encyclopedia Americana. I believe it's volume one. 
Social conflicts, warfare and headhunting have been the social conflicts, both now controlled by European governments. The greatest military organizations were those of the Maasai in East Africa and of the Zulus in the South. In Dahomey, West Africa, women called Amazons formed part of the standing army. Slavery was due to raids of Arabs and Hamites on Negro communities. So they knew exactly who we were, and it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. That's right. It's in the Bible. Now I said that we are also known as the Kingdom of Judah, which was established right here in Ghana. Can I prove that? Absolutely. Get me the map. Get me the map. Okay, so we, we have it blown up and zoomed in so you can see, because we know you're sitting kind of far away. So these are the old maps. These are the old maps where the white man knows the truth and he has kept it hidden from you. So what was Ghana called one time before when you used to have resources, now the white man owns it and the Chinese man owns it. It was known as what? Gold Coast! Where's your gold? Where's your gold? Your gold, Ivan. Where's your gold? You don't have it no more. The white man has it. And there's nothing you can do about it to get it back. That's why you fought five wars, the anglo Ashanti wars. You fought five wars trying to get rid of this white man from your country. And you couldn't. You know why? Because God's hand is against our people. The divine entity, the divine hand is against our people. Because we continue to break his laws. So it was once known as the Gold Coast. But right here, what do you see? What does that word say? Come on. Somebody say it. Can you see it? Judah. Don't be afraid to say it. I know y'all can read English. Don't be afraid to say it. We were known as the kingdom of Judah. Right here. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.